I am super excited about being here again. I came to the first, well, my first time coming was 11 years ago. It was here in the uh, Johannesburg area. And uh, then we went on to uh, Durban on, on the coast and uh, was invited back this year and very excited about coming. Uh, I'm not 100% today. When I got here, I started catching uh, the symptoms of a cold. I don't ever get a cold. I just get the symptoms of a cold. That's supposed to be a joke. Y'all gonna have to liven up now, all right? But anyway, uh, I've been wrestling with it and I'm trying to get it under control. So I'm going to uh, take it easy today. Hopefully I'll be 100% or close to it on tomorrow. Now, we don't have a lot of time. We got started late. It's uh, 11.15 and we're supposed to be through by 10 minutes to 12 to get back to the main hall. Um, so we're going to jump right into this thing. I moved the podium down here so I could walk among you and I want you to be able to feel free to talk when I ask certain questions. Um, before I begin, I want you to introduce you to my wife and uh, I think she's here just to watch me today. But anyway, baby, stand up so they can see you. Stand up, stand up, yeah. That's my Nubian queen. Listen, we're in here to talk about the importance of being, of being a new creation. Uh, the text is 2 Corinthians chapter five. If you have your Bibles, I want you to look at this real quick and we're gonna jump right into this thing. 2 Corinthians chapter five, uh, verse 17 is where we'll camp out, but let's start with verse 14 so that you'll uh, get the flavor of this, this particular passage. Paul the Apostle says in verse 14, for the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. This is the King James Version. Verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are new. I want to ask first and foremost, how many new creations do I have in this room this morning? How many of you claim to be new creations? Don't be bashful now. All right. How many are Christians? Let's do it like that. All right, all right, all right, all right. Listen, put your hands down. Every person ought to have a story. If you are a new creation, you ought to have a story of how you came to be a new creation. Now remember, Paul says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, new creature, Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are new. Now, we don't have the time this morning to deal with the immediacy of the text because he's dealing with Jews at Corinth who, who thought that because they were of the seed of Abraham, they were already uh, in line or in, in, uh, they were already saved, if you will. But Paul comes and lets them know that there's a new way of salvation and it comes through Christ Jesus. I was baptized at nine years old. I'm 63 right now. I know I don't look that old. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. But nine years old. And I, I kept telling my dad, I was pulling on him. I said, Dad, I want to be baptized. I want to be baptized. I want to be baptized. And finally he asked me, he said, Son, why, why do you want to be baptized? I said, I want to be saved. 
He said, well, what do you know about salvation? And I began to tell him that I knew that the only way I could be saved is I must be baptized into Christ Jesus. And I had heard that from him because uh, my father was probably one of the greatest gospel preachers ever. And I had been hearing him, listening to him from the time I came into the world. So at nine, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I became a new creation. December 1969, a cold day in Terrell, Texas, West End Church of Christ, my father, my earthly father got into the pool and he took me down in the water and he held me down. I don't know why he held me down so long, but he held me down. Then he finally let me back up and I became a new creation, a new creature. I was then a Christian and I have been with God ever since 1969. That's my story. That's the beginning of my story. I've been preaching the gospel for 45, going on 46 years now. I started at 18, but it was all because I had had a good foundation. I had good parents, good mentors, uh, people who loved me and taught me about Jesus and lived it in front of me. And so I wanted the same thing and I became a Christian. I became a new creation because of what I had been taught. I accepted the Lord on that day and I've been walking with him ever since. That's my story. Every person who claims to be a new creation, a new creature, new in Christ, you ought to have a story. So what I'm gonna ask you just for about five minutes here, if you're not ashamed, not afraid, tell us your story. Doesn't have to be long, just tell us how you learned about the gospel, who taught you. When were you baptized? How long have you been with the Lord? And what change did you experience once you obeyed the gospel? Any volunteers? Go right ahead, sir. You can just stand where you are. And uh, hi. My name is Daniel. Um, I got baptized January 1st, 2023. But I've been with the Lord since as young as I can remember in terms of I was raised in a Christian family. I grew up around my parents, my dad's a pastor and pastor's wife. So in terms of my belief, it had always been there. But the reason why I chose to be baptized last year specifically is because until then I had the faith, I had the belief, but then I wasn't willing or ready to accept what came with it because it kind of felt like a lot of pressure, even though I, was, I know I was being saved. But then, once, once I was saved, it always felt as though I really did receive the Holy Spirit, in that, through my actions, through all the things I did, I always had this, this inner feeling, this inner voice. Of course, I'm not saying I have it wrong, but then, it's always been there to like, remind me and tell me um, what's right, what's wrong, and as I grow in faith, I hope to strengthen that spirit. But that's when I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you. Amen, 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 amen. That's his story and he was not ashamed to tell us his story. And that's what this, this lectureship was about this year, not being ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you are a new creation, if you are a Christian, if you've been born again, baptized believer, you ought to be willing to tell somebody your story. Tell them how you became a Christian. Tell them how you, what, what you did to obey the gospel and what changes you felt. Because a lot of times uh, people will say, well, I don't know how to teach the gospel to somebody. I don't know how to do Bible studies, or I'm not good with book, chapter, and verse. And, and that may be true. You ought to learn how to do it, but until then, you ought to at least be able to testify or witness and give your story. Somebody else with a story. You're gonna have to be a little bit quicker than he was now, because I don't have much time. Come right on. Uh, good day, everyone. My name is Siam Sanders Sivego. And basically, I became a Christian 2019. And the whole reason is because I was at camp. When I was at camp, it felt different. It felt better. It felt I could feel the Lord's presence. I don't know how, but I could. 
So Mipendulo was preaching and I remember he said something like, do you really want to leave here without being baptized? And I thought to myself, I don't want to die before meeting my father. Amen, amen, amen. Not ashamed to tell his story. Anybody else? I'll take a couple more. Then I've got to give, uh, I've got to give you the nuts and bolts to this lesson. I can't really just dig into it today, but I can give you a witness. Uh, it's what's on the inside, what you believe, and uh, I'd love to hear it, but we, we don't have the time today. But uh, just remember, every person uh, must have a story. If you are Christian, if you are a new creation, you've got to have a story that begins with your testimony. Now, you keep hearing the word baptism today. Uh, Paul is saying in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. How do you get into Christ? God has a plan of salvation. And our, our walk with God begins with this plan of salvation. You hear the gospel. Uh, Paul said in Romans 10, 17, so then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So when you hear the gospel, when you hear uh, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, you then must believe what you heard because it's going to change your whole life. Uh, so you hear it, believe it. Uh, the Bible says in what is that? Hebrews eleven six. 6, for without faith, it is impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. Once you hear once you believe that's the beginning of your walk of faith with God, you repent of your sins. You turn away from sin. You're letting God sit on the throne in your life and now govern the way you live. Uh, uh, Paul said in, what is that, Romans? Well, uh, no, Luke said in Acts, what Jesus said, this is a good one. Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, I tell you, nay, except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So once you've repented of sin, you change your mind. You want God to fill you, fill your mind. You now take on the mind of Christ. That's being, that's becoming a new creation. Um, what you do is confess that Jesus Christ is the son of God, Lord of your life. Scriptures teach us this in Matthew 10, 32, Jesus said, whosoever confess me before men, him will I confess before my father, which is in heaven. Paul said in Romans 10, 10, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Once you've done that, then you're now ready to be baptized. You identify with Jesus. Now, a lot of people say, well, what does, what does the water do? The water doesn't do anything physically. It's an act on your part of obedience to the command that came from God. It's a condition of the covenant. If you want to connect with the sin atoning blood of Jesus, you must be baptized. Jesus said himself in Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So this is the beginning of becoming a new creation. What you're now doing is you're changing the way you think. If you're going to be a child of God, if you're going to be an influence in this world, God wants you to look like his son, to think like his son, to walk like his son, to love like his son. So now you and I have to think like Christ. Paul said in Romans chapter 12 and verse number one, I beseech you brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now you don't think the same way you used to think. Once you're baptized, you start studying the word of God. You're taking on the mind of Christ. You're changing the way you think. And now you're thinking more in, on spiritual terms. Paul said in Philippians 2, 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. All this is necessary because when you come into relationship with God, God is getting ready to use you and use me to draw other people into relationship. 
Now remember what the topic is, the importance of being a new creation. The significance, the blessing that comes with being a new creation. There's so many benefits when you turn your life over to the Lord. One of the biggest and one of the ones I think would be most, uh, would be of intrinsic value to everybody in here today is that when you come into relationship with the Lord, he gives you the power to fight off Satan. Every one of us in here needs help fighting the devil. Because he's after every one of us. He's after the older folk, the seasoned folk, but he's especially after young people. And he has things every day in your face trying to draw you away from God. I tell a story often when I'm preaching different places about when I'm at home, uh, I love to go fishing. I have an old boat I call Sweetie. We take the boat to the lake and when I go fishing, I don't, I don't really believe in buying bait because that hurts my feelings. That's bait already in the river into the in the lake and so I go in time to cast my cast net out into the water, catch bait. We got a little bait called shad, about, looks like a little minnow, about that long. And everything in the lake likes to eat the shad. And so I go out there and if you go early in the morning, or late in the evening, you can just catch your limit. You can catch a bucket load of it and you can just fish the rest of the day with free bait. And what happens is I, I'm a, a relaxing type fisherman. I don't care to be out there just casting, casting, casting. Uh, I drift fish on my boat. I throw the line way out into the wind. It's got a weight hanging on the bottom. You go up a little bit, about six inches, you tie your circle hook and put a hook on there and then thread the bait on. Throw it into the lake. Let it hit the bottom of the lake as the wind is blowing the boat across. The rod just bobs on the side. And so while it's doing all that, I'll put three or four lines in the water and I'm just chilling. Y'all know what chilling is? Yeah. They still say that. <laughs> and so I'm just chilling and uh, I'm waiting on that rod. I'm waiting on it to not just bob, but just pull down. Because in Texas, we catch catfish and bass, big fish. And so whenever it hits that rod, it'll pull it down. I'll know something is on there. What happens is, and we don't see this, but on that hook, I have put bait that the fish likes. I can't see it anymore, but it's in the water. It's down there on the bottom and it's floating along. The fish comes up and sees the bait. It realizes this is my favorite meal, but it also realizes something is wrong about it because it's all upside down and it's crooked and its guts are coming out the side and something is not right here, but, and so they swim off. But they know that's their favorite meal and it's right there and all they gotta do is just go grab it. So they come back, swim around it, start nibbling on it. They nibble and nibble and it gets so good to them they reach up and bite it. Once they bite it, that hook comes out of the bait, goes up in the mouth of the fish. It's painful, they can feel it. They know they've messed up so they take off running. When they take off running, the line tightens up, the rod bobs on the side, I wake up from my nap. When I wake up, I look and see my rod over there bobbing. I grab that rod and I'm real, uh, I, I exaggerate a lot when I'm catching fish. I, I take my wife some time and she hates it when I do this, but I, I'm set that hook, I drain it, uh, pull it way up here and I start acting like a coon dog. I go, oh, 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 oh. oh it drives her crazy, but I'm catching fish. And so I've got a fish on that line. He takes off running. I start reeling, 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 reeling. I get him up over in the boat. And see, on my boat, ain't no catch and release. This fish is going home with me. He's eating my bait. He, I've used my rod and reel. I put gas in the boat. I've spent money here. Uh, we hungry. He's going home with me. 
I told you all that to tell you this, the devil does you the same way. He has hooks in life and he's got bait on the hook, stuff he knows you like. And what you like might not be the same thing what she likes and what she likes may not be the same thing what he likes, but all of us have appetites, we have likes, we have desires and so the devil finds out what your weakness is and he puts it on a hook and he just waits. He's chilling just like I do on the boat and you just like that fish you come to you know something not right about this bait because And after a while, you do just like the fish. Reach and grab it, find yourself in trouble. Try to we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Every one of us in here, I don't care how old you are, 9, 10, 12, 13, 15, 18, wherever you are, you are an earthen vessel. Even me, I, at 63 years old, I'm an earthen vessel. And really, uh, what it's saying is I'm just a jar of clay. I'm, I'm pottery. But look at what he says. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. What, what's the treasure? The treasure is the gospel. If you read it, you'll find that the treasure is the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We have this treasure. God has entrusted our, our tents, our tabernacles, our, our earthen vessels with the gospel. Watch this. He says, we are troubled on every side. Get this now, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. I don't know if you got it or not, but Paul was letting us know that if we are carrying the treasure, if we are not ashamed of the gospel, if we are sharing our story day in and day out of how God has saved us through his son, Jesus Christ, he's saying to us, we have nothing to fear. He says, trouble is going to come. That's all, and Paul knew something about trouble and he's letting us know, trouble will come. And you know that trouble comes in your life, but God is there in the midst of your trouble and he's working that thing out for your good. Yes, sir. You say, well, preach, I don't, I, don't, I don't know much about that. And it's difficult at a young age to, to, to really fathom what we're talking about, but, but, but uh, what God is letting us know is that if we are not ashamed of the gospel, if we are carrying the treasure, he says, you're going to have trouble and you're going to be perplexed. You're going to have days of confusion, frustration, discouragement. But he's saying, I'm not going to let it take you out. And that's where your blessing is. It is a blessing to be a new creation because it implies you're carrying the gospel, you're telling folk about Jesus, and God says whatever trouble, whatever situations come up in your life you can't handle, God says, I'll come in and do for you that which you cannot do for yourself. And you're gonna need that. You may be just 12, 14, 16, but you're gonna need, if God lets you live, Trouble is going to come, things, bad days are going to come, things are going to happen that you can't handle, but God says, I'll be there. And he says, I will make sure everything's going to be all right 
because you are carrying the treasure. He says at the end of that verse, in verse, what is that, verse 9, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I know at this age, for most of you, it's difficult to really uh, comprehend uh, walking with God. But I'm going to tell you something. I did it at nine years old, and I wouldn't have done it any way different. I'm glad I came to Jesus at a young age. I didn't know everything I needed to know. I haven't always done all the right things. I have had sin in my life and still do, but I'm glad I have Jesus on my side. And I'm hoping, I'm praying that you will be able to at least grasp the concept that you need the Lord at a young age. You need to be a new creation, a new creature. You need to be in Christ and you need to be sharing your story with people who don't know the Lord so that you can lead somebody to the throne of grace. If you're here and you're not a member of the body of Christ and you came to this lectureship, came to this conference with somebody as a guest, but you're now sure that you want to be in Christ, I wouldn't leave here without being baptized. I wouldn't leave here without giving my life over to the Lord. And you can do that with us at any time. You don't have to meet on a specific Sunday. You don't have to wait till one day out of the month. Whenever you believe in Jesus, repent of your sins and confess his name, we will baptize you in water according to the scripture. You will become a child of God, a new creation, and you'll leave here with God on your side. You'll leave here with a relationship with him and you'll be able to talk to him and you'll be able to have a conversation with him. You can talk to him through Jesus. Life changes when you connect with the Lord. Amen. So I, I'm going to quit right there. I only got about two or three minutes. I'm going to give you guys opportunity to try to ask me any questions you might have. I may not have all the answers, but I got the book that has all the answers in it. And it's an open book test. So anyway, <laughs> any questions before we, we dismiss today? Uh, really quickly, could you please go over the scriptures you said? Which, which one? Uh, last one. Second Corinthians. Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 through verse number 10. We have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. I gave you Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Uh, I gave you also Philippians chapter 2, uh, verse 5, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Um, I really had planned to take you to John 14, 15, because this is one where you find how God protects you. And what he does is God gives every believer uh, a part of himself. The Holy Spirit takes up residence in your life and when, whenever you go, wherever you're going, you're never alone as long as you take the Lord with you. And that's a good place to find out how the Holy Spirit blesses your life because you are a new creation in John 14, 15. Uh, I can't remember what other scriptures, they were just, is there one in particular that you can think of? Uh, that was it, okay. Any other questions? I haven't bored y'all to death, have I? Huh? Y'all still with me? Yes, sir. Everything all right? Anybody considering becoming a member of the body of Christ? If you have questions and you need some answers, uh, I don't mind answering questions, especially for those who are contemplating putting the Lord on in baptism. Yes, sir. When did I know what now? When did you know that you have chosen the Lord? That I had chosen the Lord? Um, I think I was like about eight years old. I was thinking about it, and I know when I got to nine, uh, I wanted to be baptized. And, um, it, it, you know, when you hear the truth so much, 
uh, and you're not doing what the truth says, then you, you, you want to make things right. And so I was hearing my daddy preaching all the time, you know, and both he and my mother were Christians and they were living it in front of us and they were teaching it and preaching it. And so I just wanted to be in. And so like nine years old, I just kept bugging him until he took me to the pool. And then my son now, he's 36, 30, 35, I forgot how old. Yeah, he's 36. I baptized him at nine because he did me the same way I did my daddy. And, uh, and uh, so, you know, when you know the truth, when you know it's right, you've investigated and you feel like this is what you need to do, uh, I, I, I encourage you to do it then. Any other questions? Comments? You got another one? Go right ahead. This will be the last one because they told us to be through at 10 to. I feel like a lot of people want to be this new creation, right? Mm -hmm. And in being this new creation, we want to bring more people with us. But then from our previous lives, although we are made new, there's still people in our lives from the past, right? What do we tell these people that could draw them to Christ? Or what should we do about these people who haven't yet accepted uh, the Lord as their Savior? Because it's hard letting people go, from being honest. Right. Yeah, it's just... The answer really is in our text today. If you really, if we, we didn't really dig at the text, but listen to what Paul's saying in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. He says, therefore, and if you go back up those 16 verses, you see where he breaks it all down. But then he gets to verse 17. He says, therefore, he lets us know what therefore is therefore. Therefore, if any man be connected to Christ, he becomes a new creation. All things are passed away. That includes old friends that won't give up old habits. Uh, that includes old lifestyles, old things that are displeasing to God. He says all things are passed away. God forgives, God forgets. You need to do the same thing. That's what he's saying. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. You begin a new walk, a new talk. You, you, and sometimes you have to let people go. People that won't, won't do right and don't want you to do right. Uh, you know, Amos said in Amos 3.3, how can two walk together except they be agreed? There are going to be times when you have to say to people, get behind me. That's what Jesus did in Matthew chapter 4. When the devil came the third time, he said, get thee behind me. There are times when you have to tell family members that, friends that, because you're trying to get the glory. You're trying to walk with God. You're trying to be pleasing in the eyes of God. And when you have influences that don't want you to do that or are hindering you from doing it, and you can't influence them to change their ways, you got to let them go. Got to let them go because you're trying to get the glory. You're trying to get to heaven when this world comes to an end. And if people are holding you back, they are what we consider old things. Just push them aside. Keep on going. Go forward. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I don't know about y'all. I've enjoyed this. I really wasn't feeling good today, but the more I talked, the better I feel. And then they came up here and they wired me up like I was, I looked like I got a bomb on me up here with all these mics and cords and things. But anyway, good to see you guys. And uh, I hope you have a good lectureship, good conference. And I hope you really enjoy yourself. Get all you can and try to get, get just get on fire and leave here and go back and uh, lead somebody to the Lord when you go home. Let's have a word of prayer. Holy Father, we stretch our hands to thee. We're thankful to God for this day and for these young people that have assembled here this afternoon or this, this morning. And we're thankful to God that they have the interest in you and in your word. We pray, God, that you'll bless each and every one under the sound of our voice.